Welcome to the second video on the Victor Lawnmower, the Classic 18. Uh, in this one, of course, we get the thing going. Um, I've, I've done a lot of this sort of concurrently while I've been doing Falcon doors and Honda fuel tanks and all this sort of stuff. So I've sort of made everything disjointed. The camera's now full of memory. So I've sort of got three on the boil at the moment. Uh, the first thing I want to do is thank Vaughan Shonda because he is the ex-parent from school who gave me some Nipex pliers and um, just standard pliers and needle nose pliers, that sort of thing. He knows I like that sort of stuff. Um, fantastic bloke. He's got two kids. I taught one of them, Max. Um, the daughter I never taught, um, but we're quite familiar. Vaughan's given me a, a wonderful um, couple of tools. Now, he's given me a small sandblaster, which I need, and I haven't got one of those. And, of course, this thing here for working out angles, and it's super-duper accurate. I love that. I can get a lot of use out of that. Snap-on screwdriver, ratchet screwdriver, and also this really, really great little dial indicator. Now, what's particularly good about this when we do our engine rebuilds, the um, foot on your standard dial indicator is quite large, where this one's nice and small, so you can get in those lifter galleries or in that lifter plane very, very well on a small block V8. So I'm very, very happy with that. That's wonderful, Vaughan. Thanks very much if you see this. Now, I did the Victor um, video a while ago, actually. I think it was the day after... I released the first one. It's smoky. Now, I thought it might be rings, but there was a lot of oil residue. And when you started, it didn't smell like two-stroke oil. It was it smelled like an old car that was burning oil. Um, I think they've used the wrong oil, and I think there was a lot of uh, residue in the carburetor and also the fuel tank. The um, I'm tipping it was in the crankcase too. And I reckon, I haven't done it yet, but I reckon if I run it for a while, that's going to burn out. So, look, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, leave comments as you feel necessary and enjoy. That's what we're sort of looking at this reason why this wheel's tracking just on the inside, it's sort of cambered out like that. Um, there is some damage to the axle itself in that running a straight edge, there's I can see light through these parts here. So when it's been running like that, it's actually been chewing into it a bit. The other thing is that I've noticed when you put these on. There's a bush there, and it is so sloppy. Look at the slop in that bush. So I think perhaps what the best thing is to do is to make some sleeves out of aluminium, and we'll turn them up on a lathe, and we'll get rid of all that so they spin true, because without that slack, it would probably track a lot better. Like that. It's going to do, I mean, it's moved out straight away. You can see how far out that's moving. And judging by this, that's right in the end of its tether, so you can see over here, slack on the top of the bush. I mean, that's pretty easy to fix. There's nothing difficult about that. Um, I think I'll pop it all back together for now. And we'll just look at the motor. I mean, that's something we can do another day. Um, there's another route we can take with this too, I mean, I'm tempted to pull it apart, clean out under the deck and all this sort of stuff, but then I've got to see how the motor goes. Now, if the motor's a good one, the other thing we can do, of course, is scotch bright everything to make sure it's clean and clear coat the whole thing. Like they did on the fast and loud, they were clear coating out the rust. It might work out that that's not a bad idea because it might then stop any further paint from lifting um, and sort of yield a semi satisfactory result. The fact that this is done in hammer time will be enamel. And um, you can't put modern acrylics or two packs over enamel, but because it's so old, I don't reckon it's going to matter. But that's another thing; it'll show, it'll retain its patina, if you know what I mean. And um, might be another avenue we can take with it. Right, a carburetor for the little Victor. Let's see if we can work it. This is a rickety table, by the way. So if we get seasick, I'm just going to pop this bowl off. That wasn't very tight. And we've got a beautiful brass or fiber washer, followed by a float, and there's your float. And my god, there's actually pretty much nothing in here. Well, the needle seats under there. God, that's weird. There's a little bit of debris there, but not much. I have to wash some of these parts. That looks like it's been repaired. It's been soldered all around, all around the perimeter, and also 
so it's obviously had a hole in it. It's hollow at the moment though. I don't know when the last time this thing went was. But hopefully if it is faulty, we can still fudge it a little bit and get the thing going. I'm not even going to try and use that fire washer again. Where am I the glass? I need my other glasses, I can't see properly. Alright, so I think we're going to take the pop that jet out. So it's got the most the most minute venturi in it. And it's got this massive bowl. This is weird. There's a fly. This is weird. We have to take. I'm going to pop that out too. That's getting in my way. I'm being a little irksome. So I've got to pop this out. And that is. Got a little protrusion on it. So this bloke here slides right out. The other thing is, there's the needle for the needle and seat, which fell out of there. It's all really oily stuff because obviously the fuel's evaporated off. But that is about the extent of what I can take off. There's the tickler, it's a little valve, and obviously the fuel flows out there. So we'll get an airline, we'll just make sure. I'll pop that out too and just see what's under there. There's probably a strainer or something, I'm not sure. Alright. Another fibre washer obviously. And that's pretty much the sum total of it. <laughs> there she can be. Absolutely dick all in there. It's got some sort of it's got another screw there. And that doesn't rotate so that's seated all the way down. Whoops. I'll pop him out. He is the same sort of thing but without that protrusion. So that's the one that goes in the bottom. So I'm tipping best thing to do is pretty much nothing. I'm not going to take that out, that doesn't matter. I think we'll just wash that up in a bit of juice and put it back together. I'm curious about this though. It's got like a removable jet on the inside. A little hole there which we don't want to tamper with. And I'm tipping. That's how fuel gets in through there. Is there a hole down the centre of this screw? I'm just going to pop this out and have a bit of a sticky See what the hell's going on. It's got this big brass screw in it. Never seen a car red like this, but then I'm, oh shit, I'm not experienced with these sorts of things. Right, so there's a tiny, tiny hole down the centre of that. I can barely even see it. We can see it when we hold it up to the sky. That's your main metering jet. Okay, and then of course that feeds up here into the venturi. So that's cool. It all looks clear. I mean, this thing would have run. I'm sure of it. I've run out of carby clean though, so I'm just going to have to do this with some petrol or thinners or something. Carby cleaner, a toothbrush with thinners and a jam jar and an airline. This thing apparently is important here. Nice and clear. Clear, clear. That's a fuel intake. Hang on. Uh, there should be air coming out of there. No, it's not blocked, it's got a really small hole. Well, what's crap in there though? I'm sure of it. What do you think? Do you like that? Spiffy? Mm, look at it. If I can remember how to get this mother trucker back together. Alright then. What have we got? We've got this guy here, which goes, whoops, in the bum. That's that way. Can you see this? Splendid. There it is down the bottom. And guess what? I can see through it. That's good. Um, let's put this on. Oh, come on then. Okay. Good. Have I forgotten anything? Have I forgotten anything? Hey, hang on a second. If we get this and we move it to the side, we can pop the needle and seat in, which looks like it's got somewhere there anyway. So I'm just going to flip that over. Copper washer over the bottom of that. Now this has got a cut in it there, and I'm wondering if that coincides with... Uh, there's a screw there somewhere. Anyway, let me, I'm just going to pop that in. And get it through that bottom hole and that'll keep that um, 
that'll keep some tension on it. That'll keep that from moving in the needle and see what drop out then. Radio, so there's a grub screw and I'm wondering if that coincides with that there, with this one here, that we just sort of put in before. Not sure, no freaking idea. I think it does. That's a keeper, actually. Just let me just make sure. Now I had a bit of trouble figuring this bit out because, um, well I just did. Yeah, that's it there. All right, so now I know what that's for. All right, so we're learning. So there's a little bit of movement in that, but I don't know if it's supposed to be there or not. This thing really should go, I'd like to put it that way because that's where the solder is, but I reckon, is it gonna friggin' hole in it? I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna put it that way. It's a bad soldering job. It's not a very good one at all. So this will probably sink. So I don't think this is gonna be the last time that we take this thing out. Of course we've got, whoops, the bowl followed by this little bloke here, which screws in the bum, and we're good. I think that's right. I'm hoping it is, but I have no idea. Okay. okay. Followed by this bloke here, which goes in the top, which holds, that's got a little guide on it, for that there. So we'll put that in. And I reckon there is our little car be cleaned out. So it should be good. It should be. Should be the operative word. And then, of course, we just whack that little spring over. Try to scratch the crap out of it. Like that. And then, of course, that goes like that. Which slides down. The spring goes in. That goes on. In the center. And then this little bloke slips over. Which is all good. So that should work. What do you think? So we're putting our little Victor together to the soundtrack of somebody else's little Victor. I don't know if it is a Victor. I'm just going to pop the carburetor on there and tighten up that clamp, which is reasonably crap to get to, but we can do it. Probably about right. Still not overdo it. Right. Okay, okay. And we're gonna, oh, that was nice. We're gonna put that through there, and it's got a little chain, or what do you call it, cable, tension thing. I'll set that up in a minute. How's this? Hang on a sec, because okay, I can go further. That will be eventually off. And that little bloke goes under there like that. So full throttle, no throttle. Turning around, popping in, she goes all the way down and that's the table like that. So that should show us, can we see some throttle action? Can you see it? Okay, cool. First thing I suppose we'd better do is clean the tank. I can't see where my CRC is for now. Um, just got a little strap here. There's a keeper down there, it's got to be all cleaned up. And we can release the tank by undoing this bloke. I prefer to use some lube on it. Oh, there it is. Hang on. Oh. I found a, a 1950s Emco electric motor that I took out of a washing machine in a tip when I was little. I was about nine or ten. I was at a friend's house in Country Vic. It was around my whaler. Um, once we come on, and we both there was a bunch of lawn no, a bunch of washing machines there. That's pretty funny. I think we'll clean that. And we took motors out, and we took them back to his house. And um, his dad was there, and we, we wired them up and plugged them in. Okay, how does that come off? Well, this looks like it could be a bit of a pain in the bot bot. I wonder, I'm sort of running the gauntlet doing this a bit, I wonder if I can put a shifter over it. Oh yeah. Oh, bugger. This sounds like it's got a strainer or something on it. Oh look, a strainer. Here look, that's filthy. Okay. So the consensus here, 
That is munted. Look at that. All right, I need a rag. I'm going to clean that up too. I'll put that to the side for now. Let's have a look at the tap. Jesus, it's wet. Look at this. This is a mess. Let me get some tube for a second. Let me just see if there's any airflow. I'm just going to plug that in and blow in this end. That actually seems to be kind of working. But we're not going to be us unless we pull it apart and mess with it. Alright, so let us pop that out. It's going to be like a lovely little super swift one. No, the other Victor one. What am I talking about? There's the O-rings. Couple of O-rings, no big deal. They just feel really, really loose. So I'm going to drop that in some thinner, I think, and just clean that out. Right, so what we've got is we've got our Aldi O-ring ascent assortment. Um, not even sure if these are in purpose for petrol, but we're going to try for now. This is a pretty good kit. It was like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something. So what we've got is a whole load of them. They should be okay, but if they're not, well, if they're not, and I use my dentist tool to flick that out. That is as hard as a bloody rock. Wow, that's hard. And it's broken. That is absolutely destroyed. Let me get in here again. I'm probably going to give myself an injection here, which is going to be too good. I'm tipping these are the same size O-rings. There's the end of it. My gosh, that is as rigid as... I think, I'm wondering if there's supposed to be one there too. Not sure. That's the one for the fuel. That's the one to stop it coming at the end of the tap when you pull it open. Gee whiz, these are stiff. You know what, I'm just going to break that. It was kind of working though. Okay, so here we go. We have an assortment of O-rings to sample. That looks too small. Uh, where are these ones? Oh look. Actually it looks too big. What about this one here? Huge. That's so good. And don't forget we've got these ones here. I don't think any of them are any good really, but <laughs> I'm just going to try these stuff out. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, right, so pop that in and get a second one and pop that in too, if I can get the bloody thing around there. What do you think? You reckon that'll work? It's going to be tight as a fish's bum, isn't it? It's going to be very tight. Oh, okay. Let's just consider that for a moment. Chucked a bit of oil on it. Will it fit or won't it fit? No, it's looking reasonably bad. Oh, yeah, you can kind of screw it in. There's a bloody screw going. There it is. Oh, yes, look at that. Uh, this being brass, of course, you can get. I've just got a bit of scotch bright there for now. That pinky colour will come off. And you can clean them up with scotch bright and they give it a really nice antique look. But of course, it's not immediately necessary. I mean, it's just a thing you do, I suppose, if you want it to look a bit nicer. Right, ooh, that's tight. Okay, on, off, on, off. And of course, the petrol is going to lubricate that a little bit. Um, it just remains to be seen whether or not the. What do you call it? The thing I. Um, the O ring stand up. I put them in my mouth. Nothing coming through there. Yep. Oh man. Good skull. Excellent. Right. So, next thing we're going to look at is the petroleum tankage. So, we'll clean that muck off there. And I don't know if I let you see in here yesterday. There is a gargantuan quantity of shh poo in there. You see that? So I think what we're going to do with that, we're not going to use thinners there, obviously, because it's going to mess with the finish on the outside. So I'm just going to put my finger out there and drop some juice in there and stick a rag in. Here's a nice rag. And then swirl it around with a screwdriver. Like that. Like a big mullet of cocktail and swish it around with a screwdriver. Like that and try and clean it out. 
was going to use two stroke. Old petrol from Dave's motorbike, which I added oil to. Oh, that's right. And it stinks. There it is in there. See, it's in there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a rag, and I'm just swilling it round. And it's coming off. How can I get this to show you? See there? Can you see that? There it is. That's a clear shot. Look at the muck coming out of it. It's pretty grungy. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah. But really good for cleaning up the outside. That hammer tone finish is just gorgeous, I reckon. It's a really old fashioned thing. Let's go around the neck a bit. We can do the cowl underneath it and all that sort of stuff. Might do that now actually and use that old petrol for that. Need something soft to put that on. There we go. Oh, let me get the cowl. I'll just get this one out. There's a few stains at the bottom, but I'm not worried about that. Just as long as it doesn't cause too much grief. Can you see? Can you see? Where's the camera? You can see a bit down there. It's not too bad though. Can't see Teflon tape doing a damn thing, but it's sort of, it's not a tape of gas thread, but it kind of is at the bottom. So all this is going to do is just cushion the blow as I tighten it. I don't remember how the bloody hell the thing goes. I think that faces the back, doesn't it? Does it? No idea, just a moment. Actually, it goes like that. Yes, it would have to face the back. There's not going to be another thread left in there to tighten. I might just leave it. Maybe I can tighten it a little bit so it pokes out the front. Like that. I've gone too far. I just don't want to do it anymore. Ever so gently. Maybe I'll just put it in. <laughs> and then get it in like that. So, he went something like that before. And that just goes on there. I've cleaned up under here, but not particularly well. It's better than it was. And we can just tighten that up. Oh. With the right size socket. Just gotta, actually, I'm just going to do it up by hand first. And just make sure I've got that thing the way I want it, which is pretty much around there. I'll just try it on the mail first. I've been inclined to have... Um, there we go in. Um, you know, another, I'll have another cores. That's a quarter inch cores. This one here, the slotted one from the front, I've sent it put in there to try and make all this look complete and just use a different one at the front. Um, just a, just purely for aesthetics, but nothing else. So we'll pop these little fasteners in. And then we seal that and say, Stuff. I'm just trying to talk for the sake of it because there's music playing in the background and I don't want to get pinned for copyright so I'm just going to stick that in there. I'm not going to tighten it really because the moment I go to start it, it'll tighten itself. I've got this fuel tap facing the wrong way but we can't afford to give too much of a poo about that at the moment. We just want to see if this thing is going to go. And this fuel line is not very period 19, oh, 1959. So I might have to sort of give it some radius and then bring it back like that somehow. Um, not going to look tidy again. So we're looking at function over form. So if I pop that in like that, that's not going to come to any, otherwise we're going to come down and have a dog leg in like that. And it's not going to be much good. So look, that's not very tidy, but it's going to be functional. You can't even see what I'm talking about. That big loop there. Right, yeah, time for the crunch. We're going to see if this old bucket's going to run. Stick some juice in, and uh, hopefully the first time, the first obstacle I should say is going to be to make sure that um, it doesn't pour fuel everywhere. Okay, how are we looking, guys? So far, so good. Oh, let me just check. Right, there's a good amount of juice in there, so that's a good place to begin, hey? So, we're not leaking anywhere, so we pull the cock open. Sounds a bit crude, but we know what we're talking about. 
We wait for the fuel to go in. How do you do this? Do you hold that down or do you just wait for it to fill up and then tickle it? Where's the hole? Oh, there it is at the front. Hang on. No action yet. Oh, you move a Can you see? Okay, I can feel. Yep, there's fuel. Good. All right. So here we go. This rope's stupid. I haven't got the right one. Um, you can tell I'm not experienced with this, can't you? Pretty sweet little runner. Well, so there you have it, 1959 Victor 18, running very well. Uh, a couple of issues, a little bit smoky. I think it could use a, a set of piston rings in it. Uh, also, it doesn't want to rev high. It uh, that could be down to the um, the fuel's very old in it, and it might be sensitive to that. So this is the fuel over Dave's bike that have been sitting in there for God knows how long. The Victors aren't so fussy with it. The later ones, this one might be. So. You know, using a different mix and uh, a higher octane fuel might help it. Uh, I'd be inclined to try that before um, consigning the engine to a rebuild, which is just going to be basically pistons and a piston and rings or, you know, a hone or whatever we need to do. But uh, it certainly runs all right. Uh, very capable of cutting the lawn. But um, the other thing we can do and think about uh, with reference to this is I've got to make some bushes for the wheels to stop it splaying because they're very slack in the in the nylon bushes they're flogged out and a bit of the wheel will have damage from um, from excess wear if you know what I mean in that position so I can make some bushes I think the front ones the front ones aren't too bad but I can push them all that's pretty easy to do um, and the other thing we can do is we can scotch bite the whole thing and clear coat it to protect it from lifting any further any more of this paint lifting now that's a thing that we used to see on fast and loud they're always clear coating rust and that sort of thing but look it is a possibility gee that's warm um but otherwise we can just leave it but it will deteriorate further in the humidity of a garage so 
you know, a bit of clear over the whole thing might might um, preserve it a bit better. I don't know. But uh, as usual, please leave comments. You know. It's in a running state now, so I can put it to the side and look at other things. I'm still using the mowers as a break from the fuel tank and the doors on the XC. The fuel tank's been lovely, the doors are being a pain. So, um, just, yeah, please comment. I know I've done masses of videos this January and back at work soon, so I won't be able to do too many more. The other thing is another chap offered to try and find the Victor signage. Can you see that? I don't know how much of this is in frame. The sign that goes there, he had a friend with lots of stuff. I would love that. That's the thing I really want there. Uh, this snorkel can be shortened, of course. I don't think that's the original hose, so I can cut that and put that down there and fix up that choke thing. When I ran it, um, I did take the air cleaner off because um, I was worried that it wasn't getting enough air. And apparently, uh, that will have something to do with the length of it, will have something to do with the running of it as well. Don't know. I don't know enough about that. But at the end of the day, let me know what you think. We're going to do a sympathetic restoration at some point. Um, I want those other parts. And also, let me know what you think about just clear coating it. And uh, it'll give it a bit of sheen, but it'll retain all this, um, all its battle scars. So, yep, let me know what you reckon. But uh, that's it for this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy your classic and I'll see you later.